Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com, and this is the video tutorial for using Creation Art Effects. If uh, you're not familiar, Creation Art Effects is an After Effects template for CS5 and above, and it allows you to convert your footage into moving works of art. And it comes with 50 art effects, which means you can choose virtually any medium you can think of for your video. So that includes lots of pencil and pen drawing styles and painting mediums, as well as a lot of creative and more unusual mediums like halftone effects, chalkboard, whiteboard, uh, graffiti, claymation, 8-bit animation, flipbook, Legos, paper cutouts, uh, ink bleeds, charcoal, pastels, and the list goes on and on. And it's very easy to use too. You just drop in your footage and you can export any of the effects. And if you want, each comp has a control layer with dozens of customization controls so that you can edit every detail and really get a lot of different styles from each medium. And I should mention that it also works just as well for photos and text, because even on a still image, the textures are going to continuously change so it will give it this nice animated quality. And on a different note, this is a project that had more meaning to me than any of my other templates because before I started working in video, I was a full-time artist and I was an art major in college and I've, I've just been an artist my whole life basically. So this was my return to fine art in a sense. And I uh, really wanted to make the coolest and best looking artifacts out there. And I think you're going to be really pleased and really enjoy using it. All right, so I'm going to go through the process of selecting and customizing an artifact for my footage, uh, showing you all the template features along the way. And then I'll go over a few of the less obvious features. So when you open the template, you should see some instructions. I don't need those right now. Your uh, project panel will have these folders. And make sure that your effect controls panel is available as well because you'll need that. Just go to the window menu and effect controls. And the first thing that you need to do is import your footage and place it in this your footage comp at the top here. And this will automatically put your footage into every comp so that you can preview or export each effect with your footage. So go to File and Import and locate the file and drag it in here. This is a shot I took of my adorable dog Maya in the snow. And uh, this would be a good time to add any brightness or color correction effects. Uh, you want a good dynamic range so that the brightest parts are pure white and the darkest parts are black. Uh, so you can add a levels effect and do that if your uh, footage needs it. And it'll make your final effect look better. Now, if you open this first folder called Artifacts, you'll see lots of different folders inside. And each one is a unique artifact. Uh, a few of these folders may even have multiple presets inside that are unique, so there's really a lot of options here. And maybe you don't know which one is the right one for your project. Well, there's a couple different ways to preview all of the effects to help you make that choice. First, the quick way to see all of the effects in action is to go to creationeffects.com and go to the web page for Creation Art Effects. And then scroll down and find this video called Creation Art Effects Preview. And that will show a few seconds of each effect on the same footage so that you can compare. Or if you want to preview the effects with your own footage, you'll see this Artifacts Preview Comp in your Artifacts folder. And just open that up and you'll see all the effects in there. Uh, so you can see if I just isolate a layer, I can see what Maya looks like in every medium. There's charcoal and graffiti. Halftone dots. There's a Monet. And here's one of my favorites, Mixed Media. And uh, if I do a RAM preview by pressing the zero key on the numpad, I can preview the animation. Now some of these have a layer marker note that says, set comp resolution to full for an accurate preview. Uh, depending on what effects are used in these comps, changing the resolution here can have a dramatic effect on how that effect looks. So the resolution is set to half by default to make it load faster, but if you see this marker note, you should set it to full so that you can see what the effect looks like when it's exported. Also, these are color coded, so the main artifacts are blue, and then you can see there's some other colors here, and these layers are a combination of copy and paste effects, and mats, and frames, and borders, and I'll go over those later in the video. 
Uh, but for now, let's get on with converting my footage. So I've got my dog here and I've decided I want to use the pen drawing effect on her found here. So inside this folder and every effects folder, you'll see a main comp with the main effect in it. I'll open that up and you can see that automatically Maya is now this beautiful animated pen drawing that looks completely authentic. And this is ready to go. If you're uh, happy with the default settings, you could export this comp as it is. Or if you want to play around a little, you can customize it using the control layer. But before I get into that, let me explain the rest of the contents of this pen drawing folder. You'll see this pre-comps folder inside every artifacts folder. And inside you'll always find another your footage comp. Now by default, this already has your footage in it that you put into the main your footage comp up here. But each effect has its own separate your footage comp so that you can use a different clip if you want. Or if you wanted, you could put a different artifact comp in here and basically combine multiple effects into one by nesting compositions. As for these other pre-comps, these are all dynamic textures and you'll see them as layers in the main effect in here. Dynamic textures are a very important part of the template and they're kind of the magic ingredient that makes the effects look so authentic. Each of these dynamic texture comps take multiple high resolution images and they rotate and move and flip and blend them together in random ways so that no two frames will ever look the same. And you can see in the pen drawing effect, I've got several pen strokes textures and I put them on this sketch pad paper texture. And then I use this fingerprints and smudges texture as an overlay over the whole thing. And you can see at the top here, there's an instructions layer. If you unhide and isolate that, you can find helpful info about how the effect works as well as instructions for customizing. And also note that many of the layers will have these layer marker notes on them with helpful comments or instructions. Okay, to start customizing, I'm gonna select the control layer. And then in my effect controls panel, there are all these slider controls which I can use to customize the look of the pen drawing. Each effect has different controls and some of them, it'll be pretty obvious what they do when you play with the controls and some of them won't be very obvious. So if you're confused, just read that instructions layer because it gives a rundown of the controls and what they accomplish. Uh, I should mention that if you see your animation presets here, you should turn those off because you don't need them and they just take up space. So just go to this little drop down menu and uncheck show animation presets. Now, it would take too long, so I'm not gonna go over all of these, but just know that you really get a ton of control. Everything in here can be customized. Uh, most effects give you the option to use an outline. Uh, you can check the box and you can customize the line with these controls. And with these black and white mediums, you'll often get an option to incorporate the colors from your footage. So now the drawings and colored pens. And that's cool, because you can see that my husky has one blue eye and one brown eye. Anyway, another feature uh, you'll see in every artifact comp is the stop motion effect at the top here. And this layer is very important. I said earlier that uh, dynamic textures are what make the image look like an authentic drawing or painting. Well, the stop motion effect is what is really gonna sell the animation and is what's going to keep your effect from looking just like a cool video filter made with software. And uh, instead it'll make it look like you did a real painting or drawing took a photo of it and did another drawing, took a photo of it and so on. Uh, real handmade animation hardly ever uses a full 30 frames per second. So in most of these comps, I've set the default frame rate to about eight frames per second. And it makes it look like kind of a crude animation. And I think that's good. I fully embrace that crude look. It helps make it look authentic. But if you want it to play smooth, you can always just turn this layer off and uh, the textures will change on every frame. Just note that if you are using this effect, all the customization controls for the effect are on this layer, not on the control layer. And the effect does a lot more than just alter the frame rate. It actually will add subtle variation to the scale, position, rotation, and exposure of each frame of your video, adding to that whole crude animation look that I talked about. Now what if you want to change the look of a texture like this pen stroke texture because there aren't any controls for that on the control layer? Well that's because the controls are all inside the textures pre-comp. So I'll open up my pre-comps folder again and I'll open the pen strokes dark comp. 
And you can see there's multiple pen stroke images in here uh, composited over each other. And let's say I want to make these pen strokes smaller and really make my drawing look more detailed. So to do that, I'll go to the slider controls on the control layer. And you see there's quite a few options here for customizing the look of the texture. I've actually got most of my randomized controls switched off here because I want the strokes to stay neat and parallel. But you can see if I turn on random rotation, for example, now I've got this uh, crosshatch look going on. I'll keep the parallel strokes and I'll turn down the scale here to get smaller strokes. They were already pretty small at 65% scale, but I'll take them down to 45%. And now if I zoom out, you can see there's a problem. The edges of some of these images are showing. And if I scrub forward, you can see these layers are constantly wiggling around and they're wiggling too much for their size. So I'll turn down the position wiggle amount uh, enough so that we don't see the edges anymore. So that's how you edit the texture, but what if you wanted to completely switch out a texture with another one? For example, you may want to change the paper texture to something else. I'm going to close this folder so you can see this dynamic textures folder here. And in this folder, you'll find all the different textures. Some are made from the different art mediums. Some are art surfaces like paper and canvases. And some are patterns or just miscellaneous stuff. I'll uh, open the art surfaces folder and look at my paper options. I want to replace my clean sketch pad paper with something with more texture to it. So I'll go with uh, the old paper texture here. Now, in most cases, if you just delete a texture in your comp, you'll get an error because everything in here uses expressions and all the layers are referencing other layers. So there's a better way to swap out layers. Just select a layer you want to replace and then select the item that will be replacing it in the project panel. And then hold down the Alt or Option key, Alt if you're on Windows, Option if you're on a Mac, and drag the item from the project panel onto the selected layer in your timeline. And what that does is it preserves all of the effects and settings and expressions of that layer and it just changes the source file. It's best to always use this method and then you won't have to worry about getting errors. So that looks nice, but say I wanted to go even further and give this old paper kind of a crinkled look. Well, I'll open up the old paper comp and now I need a crinkled paper image. So I'll close this folder and I'll go to my texture image files folder. And these files are what all the dynamic textures are made from. There's about 500 high resolution texture images in here. I'll open the art surfaces folder and there's a couple options for crinkled paper here. I'll select the first one. And so now in my old paper comp, I'll duplicate one of these layers. And you can duplicate these as many times as you want and you can experiment with different blending modes and just come up with tons of different looks. I'll just duplicate one layer and with it selected and with my crinkled paper selected, I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and swap the source file. And I'll change the blending mode to multiply uh, to bring out that crinkled texture. It's kind of dark now, so I'll go to my control layer and increase the overall brightness. And one more uh, quick texture swap, just to sort of open your eyes to the possibilities here. I'm going to mix mediums a little. Um, I'll go to my dynamic textures. And I want to add marker to my animation. I'll select it and I'll select one of my pen stroke textures down here. I'll select pen strokes medium light and I'll swap those out. And here's the marker texture isolated and mixed with the pen strokes. So we're done with that section. Uh, let's take a look in the dynamic textures folder. You'll see there's this mats and borders folder and you can also find these effects in the art effects preview comp. I'll close dynamic textures and open this preview comp up again. And if I scroll to the bottom, you can see them all here. So you can preview these. Um, there's several frames here if you wanna put a frame around your animation. The border comps, if you open those up, there's a control layer where you can adjust the size and shape of the texture so that you can make it look like marker or charcoal or whatever. And then you can just overlay this comp over your artifact. And if you want to display your artifact on a smaller area rather than have it fill the whole frame, you can use these mats for that. 
You can see I did it here for the chalk on chalkboard effect. So an easy way to do that is to put your finished artifact comp into a new comp, and then you can drag a mat in there and place it above the artifact layer. And then you just change the track mat of the artifact layer to Luma mat. And if you want, you can customize the mat to make it more closely match the medium that you're using. So you just open the mat comp and use the control layer inside to change the properties of the strokes. And you can also change the shape of the map by editing the mask on each of these layers. I'll isolate one layer so you can see, and I'll use my selection tool to change the shape of the mask. Of course, you may want the mat to only affect your pen texture and not the paper texture. So you can hide the paper texture in the artifact comp and then add a new paper texture to this comp. There's just one last group of features I wanna go over real quick. If you open the artifacts preview comp, and scroll down to the bottom, there's these six yellow layers. And these are copy and paste effects, meaning you can just copy and paste them from this comp into the artifact comp that you're working in. And they'll affect all the layers that are below them. You'll see all of these effects incorporated into most of the artifacts, but they're not in every one. So I put them here so that you can easily add them if you need them. And uh, like all the effects in the template, you can customize everything. Just select the layer and use the slider controls in the effect controls panel. Briefly, I'll tell you what's here. First, there's the stop motion effect. I've already talked about that. Then there's a smudge shading effect. And this is a shading technique. It imitates the effect of smearing a drawing with your hand. There's a turbulence effect. This adds a wavy unevenness to the picture. So even if an object in your footage isn't moving, its edges will become slightly wavy and move a little bit in each frame since uh, hand drawings aren't usually perfect. Next, the stroke warp effect is similar to turbulence, but the turbulence here is in parallel waves. So it makes the image look like it was drawn in strokes. And there's an outline effect, and this will overlay an outline over the contours in your footage, like you would see in comic book art. And you can edit the texture to make it look like the lines were drawn in chalk or pen or marker or whatever. And lastly, there's this add color from footage layer, which simplifies the original colors of your footage and then it overlays it over your artifact. Um, that's handy if you have a monochrome drawing and you want it to be in color. And before I end the video, there's a quick troubleshooting tip I wanna go over with you. If anything doesn't seem to be working the way you think it should, like if a slider control isn't doing anything or if something in the video just looks weird and wrong, the first thing you should always try is to check for expression errors. Expressions are these bits of code on every layer and there's hundreds of expressions in this template. And it's possible that you might accidentally delete something or something else might go wrong and an expression will turn off, causing that effect to not function correctly. So just select all the layers in the comp, right click them, and choose Reveal Expression Errors. And if an expression pops up with a yellow exclamation point icon, just click the little equal sign icon to turn it back on. And you should do this whenever After Effects gives you one of those pop-up errors as well. Those errors often occur because of something related to an expression, and the expression will just turn off when it happens. So always check for expression errors after you get an error message. So that's everything I wanted to show you. Like I said, I think it's an easy template to use uh, considering how much is going on under the hood. Every effect works a little differently. They don't all use the same architecture or setup. So again, if you ever get confused, read those instruction layers um, and marker notes. And if you wanna send me a link to what you created, I'd love to see it. Just use the contact form at creationeffects.com. And I may even put it up on the Facebook page so you can get some exposure that way. Please visit the Facebook page and follow it if you want to see what new stuff comes out. I'm always working on new projects. And uh, you can subscribe to Creation Effects on YouTube as well. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the artifacts.